This morning, if you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to turn to Hebrews, the ninth chapter. And I titled the message this morning that there is power in the blood. Anyone here need blood? Now you're all looking at me like, say what? There's life giving power in the blood. If you had no blood, you have no life. And we look at the blood of Jesus. And Jesus gave us his life so that you could have life. Now we know the physical life, but he gave it so that we could have a spiritual life. And in Hebrews, it talks about the blood, it talks about the cross, it talks about the, the different things. But I want us to think about the blood of Jesus. We look at a cross and we say, oh, there's a cross. But do you ever think of what happened on that cross for you? If it had not been for the cross, you wouldn't have the spiritual life available. Now, to have the spiritual life, you have to take an advantage. You have to make the application. It has to become real to you. You know, the greatest athletes out here, they have to pre prepare. And we expect them, you know, I'm a Caitlin Clark fan, okay? Have been since, since the time I've heard about Caitlin Clark. I have been a Caitlin Clark fan. And I really appreciate some of the things that I have learned about her preparation. As she spends the time. If we would spend the time in our spiritual lives, we would be superstars. Because what God requires of us and how he requires us to live would not be hard, it would become natural. There's this thing called muscle memory. All of us coaches love to talk about muscle memory. Muscle memory is when you do it over and over and over again. One of my favorite basketball players by the name of Larry Bird, now I know I'm dating myself, okay? if we have younger folks in here, but Larry Bird was one of, the, one of the, my favorite basketball players growing up. And Larry Bird went out every morning before breakfast and shot a thousand free throws. Now that's dedication. That's commitment. But every morning he would go out and he would practice in the same form, the same thing, over and over and over again until it became almost automatic. And as I watched him play over the years through the NBA, I saw him shoot a lot of free throws. He didn't miss very many. When we get our focus out of gear, that's when we begin to miss. When we get distracted, that's when we begin to miss. But this morning, there is life-giving power in the blood of Jesus Christ because that's what he did for each one of us. Let's read here, in, beginning in uh, the ninth chapter, beginning with verse 11 here. But Christ as a high priest of the good things to come, with the greater and more perfect tabernacle, he made with hands, not, that is, not of this creation, not with the blood of goats or calves, 
But with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all. Notice that. What did he do? He entered into the holy place once for all. I shouldn't do that because then I lose my place. Not with the blood of goats or calves, but with his own blood, he entered into the most holy place once and for all and obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of heifers sprinkled unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot, cleanse you from conscience and from your dead works and to serve the living God. And for this reason, he is a, me a mediator of the new covenant by means of his death and redemption of the transgression under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where there is a testament, there must also necessity of the death of a tester. For a testament is in force after men are dead, since he has no power at all while the tester lives. Therefore, not even the first covenant was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats and water and sanctified scarlet wool on hyssop and sprinkled the blood itself with all the people, saying, the blood of the covenant which God has commanded you. This was likewise, he sprinkled the blood with the tabernacle and all the vessels of ministry. According to the law, almost all things are purified with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remissions of sin. It took the blood of Jesus to cleanse us from sin, to forgive us. And so we look at this this morning, and I want to share with you what I can. I'm going to bring out some points here this morning about the blood of Jesus. But do you realize without the blood of Jesus, there is no remissions of sin? And there's life-giving power in that blood. We were all dead in our trespasses and sins. You know, we talk about DNA. And when Adam was created, God created him perfect. There was no sin. There was nothing that would separate us from God. But then long came along Eve, and God created her, perfect. But what happened is the temptation come along. And so when we have this genetic thing happening here, when Adam and Eve had children, their children, because of the sin in the garden, the scripture says, for all have sin. That DNA, that pure blood got contaminated. And from Adam through today, the scripture says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That contamination, we are all prone to sin. Anybody here not sinned? Anybody here not never, ne never made a mistake? If you didn't, I want to talk to you. <laughs> and in the Old Testament, what happened right in the garden? God had to shed the blood of animals to make coverings for their sin. Correct? Think of that. The perfection... God still had to cover what happened in the Garden of Eden. Let's pick it up from there. Sin separated us. Sin brought death spiritually. First of all, 
Sin many times will bring death to you spiritually before it brings death to you physically. What happened with Adam and Eve? They sinned, they ran, they hid from God. What happens when we sin? Isn't the first thing that happens when we sin, we usually withdraw away from God? Isn't God usually the first thing that we pull back away from? Because what? We know that we've made a mistake. We know that we have sinned. And we know that there's always a consequences for sin. And sometimes we get, out of, we get ourselves out of balance. We begin to blame God. God, you sinned. You made me sin. You, made, you did this to me. No, God didn't do that to you. If we understand, if God gets all the blame when it's really Satan that's, that's the one that's to blame. But because God's pureness and God's holiness, we want to blame God because God didn't. God laid that temptation in front of us. No, Scripture says God tempts none of us. So that comes back to us. We also find out here that with the blood of animals. In the Old Testament, what happened? The lamb. Now that lamb had to be pure. The lamb was slain. And the blood was applied. We look at this here this morning. Let's, let's look down here at some of the things that Jesus did for us. Number one, the blood of Jesus redeemed us. What did it do? It redeemed us. It bought us back. God made a way for us to be bought back. The sin that caused us to be separated or stolen from God, God, by giving us His Son, redeemed us. He brought us back. In Ephesians 1, 7 says, In Him we have redemption through His blood and the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. Jesus, God gave us His Son, Jesus, to buy us back, to redeem us. Number two, <clears throat> excuse me. Number two, the blood of Jesus cleanses us. What happens when you get dirty? You're dirty. Don't you want to go take a bath? Don't you want to get cleaned up? Well, there's some people that like, like being dirty. They like... When you're, when you're dirty, it looks like you've really been working hard. What about spiritually? The blood of Jesus cleanses us. It washes us. It makes us be able to begin. 1 John 1, 7 says, But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. You know what? I can, I can see Jesus walking up to us, having a towel and a wash basin, and he just begins to clean us. Begins to wash us. He wants you. He does not want you to spend an eternity in hell. And I'm sorry, some of us are going to spend an eternity in hell if we don't allow Christ to cleanse us. We can't take on the world and stay in the world, but the blood of Jesus has made a way to wash us, to cleanse us, to take care of our sin. Number three, the blood of Jesus protects us. Oh, pastor, the blood of Jesus can't protect you. What happened in the Old Testament? You know, Moses came to Pharaoh time after time after time after time after time. Matter of fact, nine times he came to him.
How many times has Jesus come, how many times has God come to you? Time after time after time. Oh, Moses, I'm gonna, I'll let him go. I'll let him go. I'm not ever going to do it again. We said, God, I'll never do that again. What happens? We fall into temptation. And if we aren't strong enough spiritually, we're going to yield to that temptation. But finally, on the tenth time, God gave Moses the instructions. Put the blood above the doorpost. When the death angel comes over, he says, I will pass over you. Do you have the blood of Jesus above your door pass? COVID. When COVID hit, what was the first thing I done? I went outside of our house and I anointed the doorpost that goes into our house. I anointed it with oil. It wasn't blood. I, I should have pricked my finger, maybe. But you know what happened? When it came, it's passed over us. The blood of Jesus protects us. The blood of Jesus protected them. So when the death angel come over and the firstborn of every household was slain, the blood of Jesus protected those who had the blood of the lamb over the doorpost. Number four, the blood of Jesus brings us into a new covenant with him. Pam talked about the temple there this morning where the priest could only go in one time a year and pour the blood up on the altar. But when Jesus came, that temple curtain was split from the top to the bottom, giving you and I the privilege, not the priest, but you and I the privilege of walking in and fellowshipping and having communion and having a new covenant with the Lord Jesus. You don't have to confess your sin to me. But you can walk straight in to the holies of holies and say, Jesus, here am I. I'm a part. This is my sin. This is what I've done. Number five, the blood of Jesus justifies us. Justifies us. We don't talk about those words, sanctification, justification. We don't talk about those words much anymore, but they are important. The blood of Jesus justifies us, just as if we had never done it. How many of you want to be free from a past guilt or a past sin? Jesus justifies us. He makes us clean. He makes us protected. He gives us that. Notice what Romans 5, 9 says. Much more than having new, now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath to come. And I should have read 5, 8 before that. But God commendeth his love towards us in the while we were yet sinners. While you were yet out there in that sinful nature, in that sinful state, Jesus came and he gave himself and that you can be justified. What happened when he forgave Adam and Eve's sin? They suffered the consequences of it, but Jesus made a covering. He, he put a covering over them. That's what Jesus wants to do for you here this morning. Number six. The blood of Jesus reconciles us. Romans 5.10 says, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. 
reconciled basically means to be restored. You know what? There's so many people today who because of sin, their lives are being destroyed. They have no peace. Many of them have no purpose. Many of them don't feel worthy. But when we receive Jesus, he begins to restore us. He wants to build you back to that man or woman that he wanted you to be. Sin has tore us down. Failure has tore us down. But Jesus wants to reconcile. He wants to bring us back into a living, personal relationship with him. All church, we need that today. Many of us need it because the world has tore you down. You made the mistake. They won't forget the mistake. But aren't you glad that Jesus says, your sins I've hid behind my back. I've buried him in the depth of the sea. As far as the east is from the west, never to remember, never to remember them against you. Don't you wish some of our friends would never remember a fault or a failure we had? Jesus come to restore us. Number seven, the blood of Jesus gives us victory over our enemies. Revelations 12, 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimonies, and they loved not their lives until the death. My friend, this morning, the blood of Jesus can help you overcome. How is, how is that possible? The blood of Jesus paid the price. Jesus wants you to come to him just as you are. But, 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 but I've done all these wrong things. It doesn't matter to Jesus. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus come to build. He wants to build you back up to the man or woman that he intended you to be. Will you allow him to do that? Say, Pastor, what does this all mean to us? To experience these benefits and to understand these benefits, you have to have a personal relationship with Christ. To experience the fullness of God, you have to have a personal relationship with Jesus. It can't be enough to just be in a crowd. You individually get the choice. And I love that so much about God because God puts the ball back in your court. Now, there's a lot I could say about that, but we'll leave it at that. You get to choose. The cross, our cross is empty. I know some, some people, they still have him on the cross. Our cross is empty. Why? Because Jesus came down off the cross. They put him in a grave. And on the third day, that old stone rolled away. And he's alive. And today, he is standing or sitting at the right hand of the Father, making an intercession for you. He said, see my servant. You put your name in there. Father, they had a, they've had a struggle today. But I'm pleading their case. Can you give them strength? Can you help them become overcomers? What do you think the Father's saying? Right on. We can do that. You see, then it comes right back to us. Do we want that help? You know, I've tried to help, I've tried to help people before. And man, when you're trying to help them, <clears throat> everything's right on. But then when you go give it to them, I said, nah, I don't want that. 
I had somebody one day that told me, said, you know, I'd rather be in my misery than I would to, to receive that. I thought, what? Many times <clears throat> we take that attitude. Instead of, getting, instead of allowing God to help us to become victorious and overcomer, we say, well, I like that too much to... Why? That gets me more attention. I had, I had somebody tell me this. That gets me more attention. And so, you know, I can get more people to help me that way. Talked to a man alongside the road one day. I said, I see you out here all the time. Yeah? I said, why do you do this? Well, I don't have to work this way. People come and help me. They, they see me when I hold my little sign out there. They, they say, I heard a story about a man in New York that done that. He was a doctor. But after he got off work, he'd go out and stand on the street corner. And he made more on the street corner than he did being a doctor. Because the generosity of people wanting to help was greater than his practice. And when they followed him home, he lived in a mansion. But you know what? Jesus doesn't put any limitations on us. He's there if you want him. He's there if you need him. He is there to let you know how much you are loved and how much you are valued by him. He sent his son to a cross. He sent his son to die for you so that you could become an overcomer. That you could have, and there are many, 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 many more benefits that we have. But Jesus came that you might have life. And that bloodline can be restored to him. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb. That sacrificial lamb that Jesus was, was one time for all sin. Do you know him? Will you receive him? Will you allow him to be Lord of your life? Father, this morning, <clears throat> as we prayed earlier, Lord, I give you permission. Will you let God work in your life? Not just on an outside basis. You know what? God has given us an instruction manual right here. But most of us won't read it. But you know what? Also, God has written his laws on your heart. You know the difference between right and wrong. Will you listen to it? Will you allow him to touch you and bring you into the protective umbrella? I don't have my umbrella anymore. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> but you know what? You can have an umbrella. If you keep it closed and you walk out in the rain, it's not going to help you. You're still going to get wet. But what happens if you put that umbrella up? You can walk out in the rain and there's a surrounding area around you that's protected. It's the same thing with Jesus. He wants to be your umbrella of protection. He wants to be your umbrella of security. He wants to be your umbrella of redemption and restoration. Every head bowed, every eye closed for just a moment. This morning, are we here? Do you know, do you have that confidence that the blood of the Lamb, there is power in the blood of the Lamb? You know, sometimes we have addictions and it's hard to overcome. But you know what? It's a lot easier when there's somebody walking right beside you saying, come on, you can make it.
That's my Jesus. He's not sitting there and saying, hey, you dirty sinner. He said, in there, come on, brother. Come on, sister. You can make it. We can overcome this together. If you try to do it in your own self, you'll never do it. If you try to clean up before you go to church, you'll never do it. But it's only through the power of the blood of Jesus Christ to reinvigorate, to give you that life. Think of a blood transfusion. And I have to do, I do have to say this. <clears throat> In today's society, I'm not sure I'd want a blood con- transfusion with all the stuff that they put in it. But the pure blood, the pure blood gives health, life, restoration. That's what Jesus did for us. So, Father, we thank you for every person here today. Most of all, we thank you for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all sins, that redeems us, that reconciles us, that justifies us. Lord, we thank you for it protects us. God, we thank you for being the blood of the Lamb, that sacrificial Lamb. Jesus, we thank you for giving your life so that we could have life. So, Father, if there's someone here today that doesn't know you, allow the blood of the Lamb to touch their lives today. Bless each one, we pray, in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen.